Imagine living your life after 50 and feeling energized and excited about your future. Welcome to the Women in the Middle podcast, the podcast for women who are ready to figure out what they want and create the life they deserve. Here's your host and master certified life coach, Susie Rosenstein. Hey there, today we're talking about your bucket list and a better way to think about it that is way more fun. Let's go. Welcome back to the podcast, Women in the Middle, with over a million downloads and counting. I'm your host, Susie Rosenstein, your master certified coach, midlife mentor, and I am so glad to be here with you again. Okay, my friend, there is a lot to this aging and midlife phase of life. Some of it I find so motivating and inspiring, and some of it I find a huge turnoff. Today's topic is one of those things. So now that I've got your attention, (laughs) before we take a deep dive into the bucket, just quick, I want to make sure you know about a couple of new ways to have more fun with what's going on in my coaching world. The first opportunity is perfect if you're ready for a breakthrough. If this speaks to you, then you are going to want to grab one of the two breakthrough calls that are available now. They're affordable and powerful. So imagine having a private two-hour coaching call to get clear about what's holding you back and confident about your next steps forward. Limited spots are available, so book now. Go to my website at suzyrosenstein.com and click the Coaching and Workshops tab, and you will see breakthrough calls listed there. The second opportunity for you is if you want an inspirational break. I want to invite you to joining us on our upcoming Connection Cruise in February 2024. The deadline is coming up fast, so join me and some amazing midlife gals on this fun four-night getaway in the middle of winter. Perfect timing, right? Who needs a cruise in the summer? I need to get out of here in the winter. So send me an email and get all the details at info at com. Just put cruise in the subject head. There are limited spots, so make sure to take action now. Okay, now let's dive in. As a midlife possibility coach, I am deeply immersed in all things midlife. And as you might imagine, I talk to a lot of amazing midlife women, much like yourself. I am keenly aware of what I like to call time sensitivity. And that is alive and well. You know, when you catch yourself being extremely aware of your age, like sometimes you think you're fine and you're cool about it. Then all of a sudden something pops into your head and you're like, oh my God, I'm that old. That means I only have X amount of time to do this or I have X amount of time to do that, I'm running out of time. So the thing is, when you catch yourself being extremely aware of your age like this, you also have some ideas about what you're making that mean for you, and it's usually negative and it's usually urgent. Like if you're running out of time to do what you want, and you've got pressure not to have regrets and fear that you just might die too soon. It's all this fun stuff, right? And as usual, you're not alone. But spinning about this fear that you're going to die too soon and this pressure not to have regrets, it's a lot. It's a lot. So it's no surprise that it can really wear on you and create, like I said, create stress. And that's where this annoyance comes from for me, the bucket list concept. Now, I know, I know it sounds like a good thing. Getting clear about what you want to do before you die, that sounds good. But what this concept is about, it's before you kick the proverbial bucket. In fact, that's exactly where the term bucket list comes from. The term was first used in 1999, not even that long ago. Somebody named Justin Zackham, an American and British screenwriter, used it in a screenplay for the 2007 film, The Bucket List. Apparently, he based it on his own personal list, like he had one called Justin's List of Things to Do Before I Kick the Bucket, which apparently then he shortened to Justin's Bucket List. And that that's what I read. That's how it all got started. Now, as a woman in the middle, I bet you've undoubtedly heard of the bucket list. I think most of us have. It's typically defined as a number of experiences or achievements that a person hopes to have or accomplish during their lifetime. And you hear it more and more as you age, especially after 50 and 60, especially with this time sensitivity thing happening. It is so common at your age, at my age, to think about things to do before you die. Now, if you're a regular listener of the podcast, you know that I love regret proofing. That is doing, saying, trying, experiencing everything you can to make sure that you don't have regrets, to be really mindful of it. I love thinking about what you really want to do and what experiences you want to have in your life. 
My big problem, though, is about this specific concept. I don't like the idea of thinking about what you want to do in the same breath of what you believe you're running out of time to do, and it's all based on doing things before you die. So my challenge to you today is to change your mindset. What might it be like to change the way you think about doing things that are priority and probably a joy for you to do without thinking about death? What if you focused on what you want to do, period? That is, you focus your thoughts around what you prioritize in your life, the way you want to be intentional with your time and resources. The result is what I'm calling the unbucket list. This unbucket is about filling, not emptying. The unbucket is about abundance, not scarcity. So your unbucket list is about planning in advance and committing to your plan to fill your life with the experiences and achievements you're excited about rather than kicking the bucket before you have a chance to have fun like you want. You see what I mean? (laughs) It's so different. So my question is, are you with me? Notice how thinking about making sure you do stuff before you die makes you feel maybe rushed, panicked, sad, hopeless, urgent, those kinds of feelings. Now think about doing fun stuff, period. How does that make you feel? Excited, happy, motivated, maybe grateful. Very different emotional responses, I would say, wouldn't you? That's what I'm getting at. Let's turn down the stress about aging a bit, shall we? Let's work on a new abundant mindset to support your dreams. First, decide how you want to feel as you're thinking about and doing really great stuff in your life. Then think about what you would actually have to practice thinking to feel that way. If you want to feel grateful, for example, what would you have to think about creating your list of priorities and then doing all the fun stuff? Here are some suggestions of thoughts that might work, but you know how it goes with thoughts. You got to try them on and see if whatever you're thinking is creating the feeling that you're looking for. So perhaps one of these, I love that I'm prioritizing myself this way. I'm open to the idea that I have the perfect amount of time to do what I love. I'm excited to be able to commit to this amazing plan. Or this one, I'm so grateful that I'm planning this trip that I've wanted to take for 30 years. (laughs) Now, these are just examples, but I think you get the point. They create such a different feeling than when you're freaking out about running out of time and dying before you had time to do or experience certain things. Now, as far as I can tell, there's no downside to believing that you have this kind of abundance in your life, but there is a downside for creating more stress in your life. Okay, so now the fun part, let's actually think about your unbucket list. Let's start your unbucket list. Let's actually start it. So please feel free to add to this over time. You may wanna actually make a list If you're driving or walking the dog right now, you can revisit this or, you know, listen to it again. Or now that you've got the ideas that we're going to review, you can just go with it. But the idea is to get ideas down and then always be open to adding to them. So here's a bunch of ideas, just thought starters. So let's talk about self-care. Is there something you want to try or have an experience with or attain a certain self-care goal? So when you think about the way you take care of yourself, Is there experience you want to have or something that you really want to do? What about travel? Where do you want to go? What do you want to experience? Is it long-term travel, like traveling for three months or more, or trips that could be taken together, like exploring the Caribbean over two years? Is it cruising around the world or driving cross-country? Like really think about travel. Definitely think about where you want to go, but also think about the experience of travel, not just getting there. What about hobbies? Do you want to try something new or do you want to perfect skills you've developed? Maybe study at a certain school or maybe learn with a professional, a specialist, somebody that you've been following or reading about, anything like that. What about passion projects? What does this even mean for you? For me, turtle tagging in Costa Rica, (laughs) building homes in Mexico, perhaps, conservation project, volunteering in Africa, starting a nonprofit all kinds of ideas. But when you think of passion project, it's very personal. What is so much a part of your core that you want to do more of it? Like you would regret 
not spending more time or investing more resources in whatever it is. Now let's think about individual activities. Do you want to experience anything on your own? I had a podcast episode recently where somebody was hiking 48 summits in New Hampshire, and she did a lot of that on her own. Is there some kind of a challenge that you want to do on your own? Or maybe a group activity, something that you specifically want to do with others, maybe a marathon, for example, or a group that you really love. Or uh, I, I remember when I was on my whitewater rafting trip in the Grand Canyon, I was surprised to see of the 17 people on the two rafts, there were five guides, but of the guests, there were three, um, either I think they were father and son or daughter couples that were on the trip. And I was just so taken with that. So the parents were in their 70s. The kids were, I think, in their 40s or early 50s, the kids. <laughs> and they were together doing this big adventure that they wanted to do for a long time. So is there something that you want to do with your parents, with your siblings, with your kids, with your um, spouse or partner, with a particular group? That's important, too. So think about those relationships. I have an uncle who takes his grandchildren to Europe, for example. So when you think about some of this stuff, is it the activity that you want to do with somebody else? Is a relationship that you're working on or that you want to spend more time with and it includes doing something together? Like think about all that stuff. So let's think about career or your business. Is there something related to this that you want to try or to accomplish or to experience? Like maybe you want to present a TED Talk or participate in a performance which could be speaking or, or uh, some kind of a competition, or maybe write a book or launch a podcast. Like there's so many things that you might be wanting to do in your career. What about new skills? Do you want to learn to play an instrument or learn to quilt, for example, or learn how to play maj or learn how to write novels? Maybe uh, learn how to make pottery pottery. <laughs> I don't even, I, I know once I tried pottery and I found it super hard, but maybe it's something with pottery or maybe you want to become really, really great at gardening. Maybe you want to learn about orchids or watercolor painting or woodworking or repurposing old furniture or renovating homes. Like what about skills? What would you love to learn or love to get better at? What about classes? Is there a course you want to take or a degree or a certificate that you would love to have? Maybe a cooking class or a museum course or something on modern art or even on dinosaurs. You know, I have to say, a lot of these examples I'm giving you have come from friends or I've heard other people talking about their dreams or it came up in my community. So people are out there dreaming about these things, including me. So speaking of me, animal adventures. You know how much I love whales. Are there animal adventures you want to experience, like going on a safari or visiting a sloth sanctuary in Costa Rica? When I went to Costa Rica, we did not have time to go to a sloth sanctuary, and I would love to do that sometime, so I haven't forgotten. So is there something you want to experience with animals? Maybe you want to see penguins in the wild or elephants, anything with animals. Maybe it's something with scuba. I remember on uh, one of the early sailing trips I took in the Caribbean, I wonder if it was the first one. It may have been. I saw squid. I don't know. I was snorkeling. I don't know what kind of squid they were, but they looked like they were from another planet. They were changing colors so rapidly, kind of metallic, bright colors. It was crazy. I was in floating in a very shallow area and I was in a school of squid. They weren't huge, maybe 18 inches, but there were so many of them. And it was a school of squid. I think that's what you call a group of squid. I don't really know, but it was amazing. I'll never forget it. So all kinds of animal adventures are out there. One that kind of surprised me was in Costa Rica. I would never have put it on a list, but now that I experienced it, I would do it again. It was a night hike in the rainforest. So the guides were with us with giant spotlights, and they knew where the toucan was sleeping in the tree, and you could see that, and they knew where the tarantula um, made a home or dug a hole or whatever it was. It was fascinating. So if you don't feel particularly inspired on any of these topics, it is so easy to get inspired. There are so many books and so many ways to find things online where you can just see lists of things and get amazing ideas. 
So speaking of Costa Rica, that always reminds me of eco adventures. What about that? Either traveling or volunteering, there's something called ecotourism, and that can be very inspirational. What about city adventures? It's not my favorite thing, but some people love cities and they love exploring cities. So is there a city that you're fascinated with or you want to vacation to or perhaps even live there for a short time, maybe a season or a whole year? So many interesting things with your favorite cities. You could even learn a language, right? That could be something that you might want to do. What about a short-term adventure? I'd like you to think about short-term adventures and longer-term adventures. Is there something short, a few days, a week, that you've always wanted to do? Could even be an afternoon. Or something that's more of an investment of time and money that you're fascinated with. Like I mentioned, living in another city or another part of the world, more of an immersive situation. If you're an entrepreneur, do you want to have a laptop lifestyle for a year or two? and start working while you're traveling. I have a friend whose son is doing that right now, traveling all over the world. They might stop somewhere for a couple of months and work from there. It's unbelievable what is possible now with so much work being able to be done online as long as you have good internet. <laughs> so these kinds of things need more planning, but it's interesting to think that there are some experiences you can have in a relatively short period of time, and sometimes you can use it as a pilot test. If you love it, you can plan for a longer experiences. So this list can go on and on once you really open yourself up to what is possible. What is actually possible? Work on that mindset to allow, whoops, I'm bumping things and bumping the mic and bumping my rings. Sorry about all that noise. <laughs> um, I'm flailing about over here. But this idea that once you work on your mindset, to be open and to allow yourself to actually lean into what you want, what's important for you, what your priorities are. The sky is the limit. So you have to work on your mindset to appreciate the reality of what's actually possible and then work on creating more of that feeling state that will help you lean into the amazing life that you are ready to start planning for. And an unbucket list is the perfect way to start. Uh, I get so excited about this stuff. I really do. I, I think you can tell because I'm flailing about. <laughs> but there is there is one more thing I want to mention. So once you get going and come up with an actual list, your unbucket list starts to take shape. I would like you to take a good reflective look at it and really check in with how you feel. What comes up for you as you see what's on your list? What patterns do you see? For example, is your list largely full of travel or experiences or people? And then what kind of priorities do you notice? Are some things more important than others? Like, would you actually regret some of these ideas if you didn't prioritize them, if you didn't make them happen? So what's coming up for you as you're looking at your collection of dreams, really? So this reflection, this self-reflection, will help you get a better sense of who you want to become. Like you want to become a woman who does all this stuff and what you really, really, really want in your life. It's a start to appreciating your priorities. It really is. You'll see it. You'll see it there. And you don't need to rush the creation of the list. That's why I said you can add to it all the time. You might even want to dedicate a whole journal to it. I bet there's even books out there that that are meant for this. There's books and things, all kinds of support. There might even be an app. I have no clue. But, you know, it could just be a notebook. It could be a doc on your computer, whatever is easy for you to access. Because when you're inspired and you get some clarity around something that you'd really love to try, it's important to write it down because we know us, we forget stuff. And it is so easy for us to poo-poo something away because of ideas that'll never work. It's too expensive. It's too hard. So watch out for all that stuff. Now, my last idea for you is about commitment. I'd like you to consider making a, de a declaration to yourself, a commitment to yourself. What is the promise that you will make to yourself about honoring your ability to create these dreams, to create movement toward these dreams, to create these experiences for yourself? So it might be some kind of uh, a thought like this, which um, I'd like to call it a declaration. 
like I declare. Now, you can tell somebody this. You can, for sure, I want you to write it down. So here's an example. I will plan in advance and commit to my plan to fill my bucket full of experiences I want to have in my life on purpose. So I'll say it again. I declare that I will plan in advance and commit to my plan to fill my bucket full of experiences I want to have in my life on purpose. And then to make it really like a declaration, my name is Susie Rosenstein, and this is my unbucket list. The date is blah blah A helpful thought that I have is blah blah And when I think that thought, the helpful feeling is blah blah You see what I mean? So my name is the date, the helpful thought, the helpful feeling to support your declaration. So that's what I have for you today. And that's a wrap. Your unbucket list is waiting for you to fill up. It really is. If you want some more ideas and prompts, just head to the Google. It's waiting for you. There are all kinds of posts and articles written about bucket lists, but you have the secret to how to make things way more fun. The solution is your mindset around your unbucket list. That's the way we roll. (laughs) And this is a fun topic to play with. So I, I hope you have fun with it. And I hope you really do open yourself up to what is possible for you. Okay, that's it for this episode. As you know, this podcast is all about how to love your life again after 50. It's really all about coaching you to be more intentional and to incorporate mindfulness into your life as a regular practice. This is how you put yourself on your agenda. My focus as your midlife coach is to help you get unstuck, clear, and focused on your current values and priorities so you don't have regrets. I can help you create the success you're looking for. That's why I created the Women in the Middle Academy with you in mind, because it's a warm, supportive, and fun coaching community of like-minded women who grow forward together so you feel great about your roadmap to a more fun, meaningful, and regret-free chapter. Email me your questions and let's talk about it and see if it's for you. Go ahead and book your free, no-obligation momentum call at www.womeninthemiddleacademy.com. And if you want to take the podcast conversation to a whole new level, join the Women in the Middle Podcast Club by heading over to susierosenstein.com and clicking on the Podcast Club button. And if you're interested in cruising with me in February 2024, the Connection Cruise is waiting for you. Email me at info at susierosenstein.com and put cruise in the subject line and you'll get an email with next steps. Act fast, limited spots. And finally, for show notes and links, head over to susierosenstein.com and click the podcast tab and look for episode 327. Thanks so much for listening. It's time for you to put yourself first, one thought at a time. I'm Susie Rosenstein, and I'll talk to you next week. Bye.